got any any films in the pipeline? Um, not really. I mean, we shot some horror film last year. Like, not a film, but a short film, which was kind of a uh, evil dead meets unlawful bun kind of right. European techno electro horror thing, which was a bit of fun. Um, and a bit got, market for horror. <laughs> yeah. Um, horror. But I, I tend to not. I'm not. I don't think I'm particularly very good at doing that kind of thing because. <laughs> but no, but it's not, um, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that's a fun to make. But um, I think there's a lot, because I've been to a few festivals, where the big horror festivals and that, and they tend to put short films on there that are either really, really ridiculously silly, yeah. and these, you know, the mess like a trauma type film, mm. or ones that are really glossy and you know, bad, as in like, it, it, it takes nine minutes and it's just someone in a car and it, you spent like 30 grand on it, like, yeah, yeah, it looks like a perfume commercial. Yeah. You know? So it ends up being like, right, there's trash, and then there's like, there's glossy trash, but mm. mine seems to be stuck in the middle of what I'm trying to. I think mean, that's interesting actually, because uh, I think a lot of horror does look over glossy, doesn't it? You know yeah, so? well, they, there was one in Czech, was they, that, the film I did the short on, um, the horror one, um, played in a short festival last uh, November ish. It was supposed to be done for another festival, but didn't get in. Because I watched some of it. And then you only get a little bit like, oh, let's see what else could be watching. You're like, mm. I think you, you can't really put yourself up well. Yeah. You win some, you lose some, you just got to close your eyes. Yeah, exactly. Well. So I just put it into that, the another one in Sheffield, and then ended up going, uh, looking at there's another Sheffield, because I'm based in Sheffield and the horror festival there. Mm. And you tend to even submit films for it. It doesn't have to be horror films, it can be like, Experimental ones or you know animation things, and then going to that festival, looking at watching some of them, and you do end up watching them and going like, you know, they are all long and they are all glossy, and then some that are really silly. And, but it's just the way it goes, I guess. I'm trying to get learn my way around, get out of it because I think we can always like the best of the thing isn't it, about going and watching lots of different films. There's always stuff to learn from other people. Yeah. So, and. Uh, has, has anyone got any questions from the floor? Yes. Uh, so Tom, um, that, that first bit was it with your was it with your family? The, yeah, yeah. Uh, very moving, actually. But yes. sort of the way you animated it was it sort of it seemed to be a bit. Have you heard of Norman McLaren? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it sort of an influence by McLaren? A, li a little bit. I think certainly out uh, of uh, interest, people like Len Nye and McLaren and stuff have been a big. You'll be gone dark. It's kind of best on one. Good, I'll be gone dark. Yeah, yeah, just this is kind of big influence, I suppose, on the kind of stuff I'm interested in. But uh, maybe it's, that's crept into that piece. Is that one with the music and the notes? That's what yeah, dots. Yeah, yeah. Using dots. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, uh, but similar technique in terms of um, cameraless animations, hand drawing, and hand, hand selling. Um, what I kind of had visually for that was completely different. In my head, it looked it was much more refined than that. But it, things kind of change when you get down to a piece of an eight mil cell and realise that your hands aren't that small. And the pen's not that small. <laughs> so, so that dictated the kind of abstract approach to it, really. But um, that was a visual Facebook. That was a visual response to um, to that audio. So I put that edit of that audio together first, and then. In some way, in my head, I kind of see how those images kind of fit together with that narrative, but they're also completely separate. Mm. Can I ask a question? Have you shared this to students and what's the reception? Yeah, um, I get really frustrated with students. But, um, <laughs> well, I always tell them, like, in 10 years, you'll thank me for this, but I don't, I don't know if they will. Um, we've, I've done a DC Pro workshop with them, so I'll get them to do their own camera stuff, um, which they kind of really buzz off because I think they're so used to to everything being out there, kind of, you know, everything's, they're a communication generation where everything's just in the face and they don't really know how to look for things. I mean, that's kind of what I try and get across is try and build some curiosity in them. Um, and when we were doing it, we were filming the workshop with the Super 8 and they were all, they were all over the camera and they loved it. So yeah, positive, positive reaction. You mentioned with the students who gave up when I was at university, all the digital thing was just about to come into it. Yeah. So, the moving film out, so yeah. getting hold of actually, I think someone did shoot a film on 16mm and it was only one person that did it because it cost quite a lot of yeah. money when this digital stuff uh, were coming in and the mini DVs and stuff it was cheap to do that, so everyone did that. 
So getting hold of a 16 millimeter camera feels probably like said, this dude's probably like 10 years down. I look at it and go like, oh, it was really good. Yeah. a defunct yeah. thing that probably won't get used, uh -huh. you know, further down the line in a few years, and you know, it ends up being a good thing. I don't know, I wish I'd got more hands on the actual film camera than that, than using digital stuff. I think half the problem though is trying to find places that will develop it. And you see, hand yeah, develop it. it. You yeah. can hand develop it quite easily. Yeah. I know it's only a DSLR, DSLR only workshop, but. Oh, yeah, well, they're well the buck, yeah. If you want to do some hand developing, I'd love to do some of that with people. Hand developing Super 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's lots of stuff on there. But it's not me, I'm the developer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a process, but it's, yeah, it's not too far off. Yeah, it's very funny as well. And that was, again, just before. Digital photography were getting big, and it was like using mm -hmm. proper film photography and developing that, and it just ends up being more of a just just something did a lot different of getting yeah. into like a dark room and sticking it in. There's a bit of as well. You've yeah. got to wait for that. You can't see it. But yeah. Mm -hmm. The hand development as well. You it's kind of rough and ready, so you will lose a bit. Yeah. You'll lose your frame, but those kind of. I've got a Super 16. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, developing wise, yeah, I would, I would just do it myself, it's pretty easy. John's heckling moved the lights, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've got all uh, Thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.